Okay, we're back with Vishal's Accord. As you can see now, the tires are on. It has moved to a different house. Today, we're going to do something different. We're going to put the battery in, which is what we were supposed to do last time. Yeah, Vishal's going to do all the work as usual. I'm just going to stick around and film. So, take it away. I sometimes wonder about why Subash is needed or required in, in any of these situations, really. If I had a trained monkey that could take video... And would... cut! <laughs> So let me describe what we're going to do here today. I'm going to open the bonnet. I'm going to take out the old battery. I'm going to wait for Vin Battery Supplies to arrive, um, who have graciously offered to donate a battery for the purposes of getting this project up and running. They will take the old battery, they will give me a new battery, and uh, we will try to get the car started. That's the first step. Once we can get this car started, then we can think about getting it completely clean because I don't know whether you can see, but from the outside, it is disgusting i put that lemon scented uh toilet freshener there toilet freshener is a very uh appropriate appropriate mm, thanks <laughs> uh because that's supposed to be disagreeable to cats and cats won't walk all over the car as subash will now show you that a cat that's it's... how effective it has been let's try to get the show on the road yes okay i feel like contributing you feel oh, like contributing. Don't touch oh, anything on the inside. I it's all yeah, yeah. I do not don't feel like don't. contributing anymore. Correct. Okay. Essentially, the only time crunch we're under right now is that I want to get the battery out so that our good friends from Vin Battery Supplies will be able to give me the new battery and we can try to get it started. And when I say time crunch, I realize that that's a bit ridiculous given the fact that this is a car that has been sitting and blocking my driveway for a very long time. So what crunch are we exactly under? Is yeah. what I'm wondering. I'm going to shimmy in. Oh, that's a okay. loud pop. Ooh, gas ruts. That's impressive, I have to say. Gaia must the other. <laughs> While we're here, let's talk about the engine. This is a H22, big BTEC. It was not red to begin with. But it was not. I made it red because... You needed the extra horsepower. Correct, correct, correct. I have a feeling some of your more mechanically inclined viewers are going to look at this and wonder what these people are doing. Why are they doing it the hard way? What's the fun in doing things the easy way, you know? That is kind of how you loosen a nut, right? I mean, that is how you loosen a nut. Are you familiar with people loosening your nuts, Subash? <coughs> this is a family-friendly program. If you're wondering why I'm doing this with one hand, the interior is so moldy, I just don't want to be what touching the mold and then spreading that mold to other places, such right. as what we're currently doing. Do you need a hand for me? No, I'm good. I'm good. Subash offering to help. That is a... Do you need some help now? Okay, don't be there, please. That is not the place for you. Okay. Fantastic. Wow. Appa. <laughs> Bit of cultural expletive there. Okay, I'm going to put this here. Under the watchful gaze of uh, Amina, the Axia. All my cars are girls. The Accord is Yuriko. The Axia is Amina. The CRV doesn't have a name yet. So if you have a suggestion for a name, leave it in the comments. But the CRV has a stick. Well, yes. This one <laughs> got a stick implanted, so... I guess Yuriko is a bit of a trans. I'm not going down this road with you. <laughs> so that's it. The battery's out. If this was my car, I would be a bit um, anxious about starting it without checking the fluids. You know what? It's a Honda. All I want is to start. The biohazard going on in interior then becomes the next order of business. If you can start and run, are you going to drive this to a place or are you going to tow it? We'll cross the bridge when we get to it. A few moments later. Hi bro. Okay, how are you? So far, we just opened, took out the old battery. Ah. Okay, so our battery has arrived. Okay, where were we just now? Okay, positive is that side. Great. Okay, let's go. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I heard a bunch of stuff. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. It sounded like a rocket ship coming on. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, the lights are on. It's a good start. Instantly! Power of dreams! Yes! Amazing! 12 seconds later. Oh, oh. Okay. Right, it starts. It starts. But it's also started to have problems <laughs> as it has started. So I, what you may not have caught Zubash is that there was a lot of white smoke. The power's 
Uh huh. Oh, coming out? Uh? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, we've proven that the car can start. Yes, we have. Some white smoke came out. Some. <laughs> some. Just some. Not a, a lot. Bit. You know, a little bit of white smoke. Uh, some weird noises happened. Ah. I, I don't think I filmed that, but... Uh... It's all part of the 90s Honda Orchestra. So what I'm going to do now is to preserve this nice new battery that I've got and I've got to later remember to put the date on it so I know when we changed it. Yeah, liquid paper. Do you actually have liquid paper? No. So I'll probably find... Some other white liquid. A silver mark. Why are you not cooperating? That's there. This is here. Gas struts. Press. Press harder. Mother. <laughs> you know what? Maybe what? it just wants to stay open. Don't give the rats something in. Don't give the rats a chance. The rats will find their way regardless of what I do. Great. What lessons have we learned today? Nothing. We've learned nothing. Okay, no, what we've learned is cars require time, effort and money. When you have the money and the time, get to it immediately. If not, you will be left with significant decay that now requires more time and money to sort out. What about a positive spin? A positive spin. If a car makes you happy, don't listen to anybody. Keep it, fix it, do whatever you want if it makes you happy. In this bleak existence... Okay, so see, now I've, it's gone <laughs> negative again. Cars are not for you to impress other people with. It's for you to achieve... Wow, I've cut myself. It's for you to achieve. <laughs> it's for you to achieve transportation benefits such as going from A to B, and in a working Perodua, you can go all the way to C. But if you enjoy your car, keep it and keep spending money. On it. That's right. <laughs> <All the files. laughs> a special shout out to Vin Battery Supplies who um, sponsored the battery for this part of the build. I hesitate to call it a build because all we did was swap a battery. But they identified immediately what battery was needed. They dropped it off at the doorstep. So thank you, Vin Battery Supplies. Convenient on the spot battery changing. So this was the whole reason you got the battery in the first place. Which you forgot to do conveniently. <laughs> Inconveniently. <laughs> So now that we have that out of the way, shall we talk about the plan? Why, yeah, uh, the plan and also why are you doing this? This was a project that was never quite finished. I put the manual in, but I didn't get a good gearbox. Um, I got a manual gearbox that had a wonky diff um, and it was bouncing out of first gear. But I got the first available manual gearbox. I learned something there. I mean, you can save money by getting the part and then bringing the part to the workshop. But if you ask the workshop to get the part, they might charge you a bit of a premium, but at least they will be able to check it first and maybe guarantee their work to an extent and tell you, okay, for six months, it'll be fine or whatever. Um, so you can save a little bit on finding parts yourself, but um, you may run into trouble if the part is either wrong or doesn't work or has its own issues. So if you're fixing up old cars and you're able to just tell your mechanic, you know what, get everything, charge me the part, charge me the labor, you could have less headache and headache can become very expensive because it was that problem that made me stop driving the car and when i stopped driving the car the interior got moldy and everything went to what words are we allowed to use on this you can say okay everything went to, everything went to okay yeah do better at an earlier stage to avoid problems later I will or go one step further and buy an accord with a manual gearbox yeah you could have i could have done that i mean i already had this with an auto gearbox because at the start that's what i wanted and then I liked the car so much that instead of selling this and getting a manual accord, I put a manual into this. So at the time, this was my daily. I wasn't thinking of it as a project car, which is why I went for an auto. And of course, the great big joke is that the CRV is a manual and I'm driving that almost on a daily basis, right? So what is even the problem? So the long story short is either just don't get into cars at all, or if you do, pick up these lessons fast and early so that they don't come and bite you later. Yeah, yeah. you're still young. Yes. Are we young? If I can get 200 horses on wheel, and I can drive this on the weekends, I'll be happy. The last time I dynoed it, which was maybe 10 years ago, it was putting out 148 at the wheel, which is not bad. And I dynoed it when it was automatic. So the idea now is with the manual, get it up to 200, 
Although I've been advised by our friends in the uh, car modification scene that if I want to stay naturally aspirated, to go from 150 on wheel to 200 on wheel is a lot of time and money and parts. Realistically, I could spend five figures and just get to 170. So I don't actually know. Maybe I'll stay at this power, but just let it be reliable and usable. So the goal has changed in the last 20 seconds to <laughs> from 200 horsepower at the wheel. The goal is a moving target at the moment. The short term goal is get it running and get it cleaned up and make it roadworthy. Make it roadworthy, yes. If you guys look at this and think I need an Accord in my life, they are great. And you can find running good condition Accords, as before, five, six thousand. Yeah. Seven, eight thousand starts to get you like a really good unit. The thing is this, 2.2. Rotex is 500 bucks. Bear in mind, the Accord was the flagship D segment of its time. The parts are not cheap. Yeah. And H series engines, not that common. Not that common. The single cam Accords from the same time were running F20s, I believe. Yeah, yes. it's not a case swappable engine. I remember when I had a B series, uh, the entire thing was flipped the other way around between K and B. Right. So the uh, like the gearbox and everything would be on the other side for the Right, engine. right. So you couldn't just drop in a K. Because all the engine mounts would be like reversed. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. It never crossed my mind to put in a K20. I mean, it would be the ultimate sleeper if it had a K series engine, sure. But K20s now are going for 15, 20,000, maybe more. The first time I stopped driving this car is when the automatic gearbox failed. So it would jump out of fourth gear and it would just rev. So that's the first time I stopped driving it. And then I put the manual in and drove it for a while. But because it needed work even after the manual was dropped in, at the time I didn't have the interest or the motivation to sort out those problems, it proceeded to sit again. Yeah. So this entire time I've been staring at the at the radiator spare tank and thinking that before I started up, I should probably yeah. check whether there's water in there because it the last thing we want is to overheat. Yeah. It wouldn't instantly overheat, but... Uh... It wouldn't instantly overheat. Oh, check this out. I'm so smart. I put this Velcro strap here to keep the battery out of the way. Wow, wow. The engineer. Engineer. Let's see what kind of orange. Oh my god, what is happening in there? Yeah, there's nothing. So we're going to top that up a little bit. 